so I messed up. Today's video is not going to be about like robotics or software. It's gonna be a little bit different than my normal video content on this channel. Um, but it will be is a chance for you to laugh at me and learn from my mistake. So for work, I was messing with some scripts, some bash scripts um, to automate some stuff. And I accidentally removed my entire computer. I wiped the root directory and I did it recursively. Um, yeah, by the time I figured out what was going on and stopped it, it had wiped almost everything. I think I had like four photos left. Um, couldn't even open documents or desktop folder. Um, it was still running, I think probably because it was cached in RAM or something, but yeah. So that happened and I decided never again. I need to do a backup system. So I run Ubuntu 20 and I decided that I want to figure out how to uh, do a backup that suited my needs. So my requirements were that I needed to have it back up automatically without me knowing about it and I wanted to make sure that it was done to the remote server and on top of that I wanted to make sure that it was not something that was going to uh, happen at an inconvenient time for me. So I wanted to do it at like 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning. With all that said, thinking this would be a super straightforward thing to find out and learn how to do, it actually wasn't. So I decided to make a quick little, hopefully five minute video um, about how I accomplished it. So first thing I did is if we jump into here, uh, I decided I'm running Unraid. So Unraid specifically uh, is this kind of overall operating system that handles a lot of stuff between VMs, Docker, uh, but then more importantly, I'm using it for basically network, at network attached storage. So um, I'm sure there's people out there that are screaming at the video right now, like I can do so much more or that's a terrible explanation of it. I used it for all of like three months here. Um, super excited about it, seems cool. First thing you wanna do though to set up for a backup system is we're gonna go to the thing called shares. Now, uh, shares is basically the allocation of the uh, hard disk, like the folders. So for me, uh, I'm gonna make a backups folder that's for YouTube, you can see my current one. It's add shares, I'll call a name, I'll call it Wow, I can't spell. YouTube. Uh, YouTube. Backups. Um, the cache pool, I just leave to default. No. Um, for something that's high volume like this, I think that's the correct move, but honestly, I don't know. Um, then we're going to go down to the next piece, and I just want to set it all to all. So I only have two disks on this guy. It's a very intro, like, it's a dev system. For the heart uh, for the server, so uh, it's nothing fancy. So I'm gonna do all, and I'm not gonna exclude this. So I'm gonna add the share, and it's gonna take a second, and then it's gonna give me a couple more options. So what you'll see here, what you see here on my screen is NFS security settings and SMB security settings. I strictly run Linux, but I do know that a lot of you guys like to dual boot. So if you want to dual boot, make dual boot. Make sure that you guys also have the SMB set up correctly. I'm going to show you specifically for NFS. Now, if you don't see the NFS, you actually need to go to the settings page first, NFS, and make sure that you enable it. By default, it's set to no. If I go back to my shares, and I go up to YouTube, let's make these changes. So, export. Is it publicly going to be publicly available? I obviously want it to be yes. And then security. So, here's the key with the built in YouTube backup they have the options to do a network storage device. What I never figured out how to do was actually pass in the username and password that the system would need to access that storage device. That was confusing. So instead what I decided to do is um, kind of jump between that a little bit and set up a different methodology that let me still keep this as private um, without having to actually uh, just blow it wide open and let anyone attach the drive on the network. So that apply. For uh, SMB, I'm just going to leave it as default because I don't actually want to mess with it. Then we're going to go over to our uh, actual, we're going to go back a page, shares, and we're going to go to the YouTube. Oops, sorry. I'm going to go to view. There should be nothing in here. What it's going to give me is the path to that folder. And now what I want to do, open a little terminal right here, 
I want to actually mount this guy. So I'm going to mount it in uh, forward slash media mount. And what you'll see is the one I currently am using. So the key here is that I'm going to show you a command where you mount it, but you also pass in the user ID and the group that you want to associate it with. So real quick, if I ls dash al, wow, oops, dash al, what you're going to see is that the backup folder actually has my username and the group user. So here's the command that you're going to want to use. sudo mount dash t cifs, and the, then you're going to pass in the username and password for the actual Unraid machine, whatever you use to sign into that machine. Then the user ID and group ID is for the local machine you're trying to back up. For me, the user ID is obviously Christian, and the group ID I belong to is users. Then what you want to do is pass in the actual uh, path to the folder you're trying to back up. So here you can see this from my old one. So this is where I put the IP of the server for Unraid, and then the base folder that I called that, so YouTube. Then we're going to tell it where we want to back it up to. So for me, I would want to back it up to YouTube tutorial. It's important that you first make this folder in media mount, otherwise it's going to try to uh, tell you that it doesn't exist. So obviously um, this wouldn't work with the current username and password, but if we uh, kill that and execute like we're um, normally imagining that Belfer backup is your guys' YouTube one, ls-al, oops, I do that every time. You should have the uh, setup where you see the Christian your username for the group or for the user ID and the group for the group ID. Halfway there. The other step is to uh, actually set up backup to look at this. So if I go to backup, this is the built-in um, utility for Ubuntu, at least on Ubuntu 20. And there's a couple things you want to do here. First thing is folder to save. This is the default. I save everything. I'm going to back up my entire home directory given what stupid thing I just did this week. And then folders to ignore, uh, trash, obviously. Please don't be backing up your trash, that's silly. We're already wasting enough uh, hard drive space in this world. Then downloads, if there's something I downloaded, I usually moved it over to desktop or documents like that, anyways. Storage location, this is where you have a couple options. So you see Google Drive, network server, and local folders. You might see network server and think, oh, that's promising, why did you just mount this? Why don't you just point to the actual NFS? Well, like I said earlier, I could not figure out how to get this guy to actually take in the username and password without just making the NFS public. Um, from what I Googled, it seems like that's not really how it's meant to be done. You kind of just make it public and then go from there. I could be wrong. If any of you guys uh, have done that before and know that, hey, you just made this way harder than it had to be, add a comment, then you can inform everyone else that's watching the video and tell them, hey, do it this way instead. It probably is better. But I'm gonna do it with local folder. And then you just pass it the directory to where you mounted it. So for what we just did, it would actually be media mount and then um, YouTube, and I think I called it tutorials um, or tutorial, whatever you named it, that's gonna go there. Then for scheduling, I just leave it off because automatic backups only lets you um, designate the if it's gonna be day, week, and how many you're gonna keep. Um, what it doesn't let you do is the exact time. That's where this last step comes in. So we're gonna go over here. And we're actually going to run, we're going to set up a cron job. So a cron job is a system on, or is a file on Linux that basically says, hey, all of these either executables or commands, I want to schedule. And it's going to be running in the background. And basically, it's like an alarm. Say, an alarm to run a bash script, or an alarm, in our case, to run a backup. And as soon as that alarm goes off, it's going to execute. And what's really cool is you can tell it exactly what time and exactly what day or month or whatever you want to do. So for me, the first thing we're going to do is make sure that you actually have uh, cron installed. So I run systemctl status cron. And what you can see is that it is active and running. If this didn't show up for you, um, you should be able to apt install cron. You may need to look that up to confirm. But um, now what we want to do is we actually want to edit. Now if this is the first time you run this command, oops. We want to run cron tab dash e. So what that's going to do is actually create a user cron job for you. There's also on Linux a system wide cron job, but um, given that I'm just a user trying to back up my information, I really don't want to put it in the actual system wide thing. You may want to. For me, this works just fine. Now, if this is the first time you're going to run it, you're actually going to get a choice for an editor. So 
let me show you uh, what that would look like. This is also the command that you would run if you picked the wrong editor and decided you wanted to change later. All you gotta do is select editor. So now what you do is have a bunch of different options. For me, I like to run Vim Basic. Um, not actually sure what Vim.tiny is. If any of you guys know, leave a comment, like, leave a comment below. Um, there's also the Nano, which obviously everyone, everyone knows Nano. Um, the one that I did initially set this to was Code, which is VS Code. That never actually worked. As soon as I saved the file, it was just getting saved in a temp folder and never actually showing up as a uh, cron job. So I don't know what I was doing wrong there, but all I know is that as soon as I went to Vim, it worked just fine, and Vim is just fine too. So uh, I'm going to hit 2, select it. Now it's set. So if I go back over to cronotab-e, what you're going to see is it's going to pre-populate with all this stuff that's commented. The only thing I've added is this guy right here. Now what this is, if I actually pull up the cron job setup, let's go to, I think this is a good tutorial. Yeah, what you're gonna see here is in order the arguments. So the first argument is the minute you want it to run in. Oops. So you can see that I have it starting at minute zero, as in on the hour I want it to start right away. Uh, if you put a dot or a star, it's going to say it does not care what minute it starts at. It's only going to care about the actual information that has a numerical value there. The next thing is the actual hour that you want this to run at. So for me, I want it to start as a 24 hour clock. I want it to start at 3 in the morning, which simply enough is 3. And then on day and month, I don't care at all what day or month it is because all I want is to specify the day of the week. So it's going to run every single day of the week, every single month, um, or sorry, it's going to run every single spe specified day that I do per week, and it's going to do it every single month. So I do star star, and then for day of the week, I want to do it on Friday. So for me, pretty much Friday is my wind down time for everything, all my projects. I try to go into the weekend not doing too much, but the actual, uh, so any big projects I've done, I would like to get backed up that night. Then what you're going to do is this backup utility is actually called Deja dupe and I'm probably butchering that and then you want to pass it so you want to call that but then you want to pass in the argument back up so if you call this line from the terminal let me show you oops that's Simon Vim it's going to kick off the backup so let me just cancel that and cancel and then I'm going to log out to log the backup TXT. Make sure you make the logs folder or whatever folder that you're logging into first. Um, I just do this so that I can actually get a report about if it was successful or not or what happened. Um, by default, these cron jobs don't actually print anything in the console because they run in the background. Uh, there's actually a really cool feature in cron that lets you, if you have a mail server set up, just designate a recipient address and it will email you about the res uh, results. I didn't set that up. Um, log is good enough for me, so that's all I'm going for. Um, not sure how complicated that'd be, but I think it's still a pretty cool tool. And that's it. So as soon as you're done here, just exit. Obviously, you do WQ if you're doing the uh, um, Vim and you're actually adding it for the first time. And now the last thing you want to do is just make sure that it saves. So do crontab-l to list out your cron job, and you'll see, okay, it's the same file, and you'll see right there it's running. So at this point, you actually have it scheduled to run every night. Um, I have it kicked off and it saves every Friday and will populate your uh, actual drive here. So if you go to here and you go to view, after the first cron job kicks off, what you should have is a nice little uh, folder that's recoverable. The last thing I'll note is that if I go to backup and I say backup now, what it's going to do, it's going to connect and then it's going to ask for a password for recovery. This is critical because say you decided to make your NFS public, that's fine. People can access it. That's I don't really like that if you're in a shared network that's private, like if it's just your home, go for it. You can at least add this, and that makes it so that no one can pull down your recovery file and boot their system as if they were you. You need to have a encryption password that actually you would put in when you're trying to restore. If I hit the restore button, I would have to be prompted with the same password that I saved this with to actually restore. So put in your password, definitely do that. At that point, it'll just kick off and you'll see it starting to scan through all the files and then actually start pushing the server. 
And that's it, guys. Uh, if you like the video, make sure you like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, I feel like this deserved a like just for my pain of losing my entire terabyte of work. So, yep. Thanks, guys. Have a great one. Talk to you later.